to play Neo Soul and contemporary gospel in the style of Sean Martin? Well, if you don't know who Sean Martin is, he is a Grammy Award winning producer, composer, and arranger. He's a member of the band Snarky Puppy, and he's produced multiple albums from the gospel artist Kirk Franklin. In today's quick tip, I'm going to walk you through how Sean Martin composes and arranges his melodies using his original melody, Yellow Jacket, as our example. We're going to talk about how he uses syncopation, passing chords, chord inversions, and extensions and slip notes to create his signature contemporary gospel sound. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, we're gonna start by first looking at the melody. We're gonna use some very basic harmony to start. I'm gonna show you the basic chords, and then later on I'll teach you how to develop these chords so you get more of that neo-soul contemporary gospel sound. Okay, check out this melody. Doesn't that sound amazing? So the first thing to know is that he's composing this tune in the key of D major. So you gotta know your D major scale before you really understand uh, what he's doing here with the melody. Okay, so how does he start this melody? He starts with this little pentatonic line, A, B, D, E, F sharp. These are all of the notes of D major pentatonic. And this scale is used in a lot of contemporary gospel and traditional gospel music. So when he plays this line, it's kind of alluding to a lot of the music that has come in the gospel tradition. So that's a really cool way to start. Okay, now let's look at the rest of this melody. What makes this melody sound so cool? Well, there's a couple things to note. The first thing is he's really jumping around chord tones. Look at that melody in the right hand. Da, da, da. He's skipping a lot of third intervals. You see what's happening there? So this is a very cool thing that Sean Martin is doing as a compositional device. He's skipping around a lot of chord tones, which primarily consist of third intervals. But that's not actually what makes this melody sound so cool. What makes this melody sound cool is the syncopation. Because this tune is written in three, four time. One, two, three, and he's really playing against that beat. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, See how he's playing a lot of the melody notes in between the beat? This is called syncopation, and it's a very cool part of this melody. So if you want to get the Sean Martin sound in your own composition, I encourage you to use a syncopated melody. Now, if you're enjoying this lesson, please give it a thumbs up, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos just like this. Okay, so as we're talking about, he's outlining a lot of the chords. By the way, the chords, D major, G major, he's up on the third of this chord back to a D major. And again, I'm using some simple chords. I'm gonna teach you how to make the chords sound way cooler a little bit later uh, in this lesson, okay? A major, he's on a simple B minor here, just the fifth of the chord. Outlining the chord, G major, he's just outlining two chord tones here. D major is our next chord, just outlining chord tones. This is super cool. E major, he goes to the third, and up to the seventh. He's kind of making this like an E dominant seven chord. And then on the A chord, he goes to the, the G here with the A triad on the bottom, okay? So fundamentally, he's using a very simple chord progression and he's outlining a lot of the chord tones, which gives the melody a very resonant sound. It really feels like it locks in with the chords. And then he repeats the same idea down the octave. Okay, so it's all the same melody notes. He's still outlining these basic chords. And then he ends right C sharp to D, creates a little suspension there on the seventh, and then resolves up to the root. Now, if you want to learn more about how to compose a beautiful melody, I put a link below to our jazz ballad composition course, where I teach you a bunch of really cool composition techniques. Now, the second step to playing like Sean Martin and getting that neo-soul contemporary gospel sound is to add some passing chords to this arrangement. And when I just taught it to you, I showed you some very simple chords. 
D major, G major, D, A major, 2, B minor, but you can actually make these chords sound a lot more interesting by adding some 2, 5, 1 chords. Check it out. Ooh, what's happening there? Well, before we went D major, G major, D major, A major, to B minor, which is kind of a pop chord progression, but if you want it to sound neo soul, there's actually a cooler way to get to your B minor chord, and that is with a 2 5 1 chord progression. So if you think of this chord as a 1 chord, like we're in the key of B minor, the 2 chord in the key of B minor would be a C sharp diminished chord, and if you put the 7th on it, the B, you would end up with what's called a half diminished 7 chord or minor 7 flat. Five, okay, so this is a quick two chord you can throw in the five chord in the key of B is an F sharp seven Okay, so what we're gonna do is right before that B minor seven chord We're gonna put the C sharp minor seven flat five the F sharp seven And now we're gonna go to that B minor seven chord and it makes it sound so much cooler Than going which is a very pop way of playing your chords. So if you want that neo soul sound, you need to use two five ones to get you to your chords. The other thing he does that's really cool is right before he gets to his G major chord, okay, he throws in an A flat seven chord, okay? And this is a really cool passing chord that you can add in front of a major chord, in this case, the G major. You can put a dominant seventh chord up a half step above that target chord and it sounds super cool, okay? Now this is called a tritone substitute. It's the technical name for this passing chord. And by the way, if you wanna learn more passing chord techniques, I'll put a link to our passing chords and reharmonization course down below. Okay, and then we get to that G chord. And from here, all the chords are basically gonna be the same. We're gonna develop them a little bit more in a minute here, but the other thing that's really cool to do is start turning some of these chords into seventh chords. I mentioned the E7, but then this chord is super, super nice. Basically, instead of playing an A major, you can make this an A sus chord with the seventh, which is the melody there. Okay, so this is another little trick. When you're on the five chord of a tune, instead of going major like that, it's very common in contemporary gospel and neo soul to make this a sus chord, okay? Now from here, we're basically gonna play the same thing. D major, G major, D, and then the two, five, one. C sharp minor seven flat five, F sharp seven. By the way, we call this A the sharp nine. It's a chord alteration that you can add to your chords. B minor, we're gonna play down here. By the way, you can make these chords seventh chords. Very, very common in contemporary and neo soul music. A flat seven, and then G major. Same chords, E seven. It's kind of muddy down here, but you get the idea. These are your basic chords, okay? So that's kind of the next step, passing chords if you want this sound. All right, step three for getting this Sean Martin type of sound, you need to use inversions. And when I taught you the tune, I taught you a lot of root position chords, okay? But he doesn't play it this way, he goes like this. Okay. What's he doing? Well, basically, he's creating a little bass line out of his chords. Instead of going, you know, da, 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 and jumping D to G, he goes, creates a little bass melody, D, F sharp, G. And so this is a very important thing that you should do if you wanna get this sound, is to think of your bass line and what is your bass melody. That's a first inversion D chord. There's the G, both root position chords. Okay. These are also some root position chords. He spreads the, note, the notes out a little bit here on his C sharp minor seven flat five chord. Kind of spreading the notes out again here on his F sharp seven chord. Really nice. B minor seven, okay? He's kind of spreading the notes out here. There's that A flat seven. Once again, kind of spreading the notes out. And then on his G chord, He's doing the same thing. He's thinking about that bass melody. G on the bottom, F sharp on the bottom. Again, it's just a D major chord first inversion. E7, really nice. This kind of reminds me of Here Comes the Sun. Here comes the sun, here comes the sun, right? And 
there's that A7 sus4. He's just hitting the seventh there. Okay, so this is the third aspect of getting this sound. You want to play chord inversions so that you have more of a left hand bass line and you also want to start spreading out some of the notes of these chords. Now if we continue to the second half of the tune, same thing that we had before. I like to drop down to this inversion of a D major. Here's my G major, D major, C sharp minor 7 flat 5, F sharp. 7, there's that 2, 5, 1 to the B minor 7, nice and spread out, A flat 7, and then the same thing here, okay, G to D, D over F sharp, E7, A7 sus4, and then a little sixth harmony there, E on the bottom, C sharp on the top to D and F sharp, okay, really, really nice writing. Now, if you guys are enjoying this lesson, I do want to recommend a really good course that will help you adding some really nice colors to your chords. If you want to get that kind of cool, crunchy sound, it's called our Chord Extensions course and Chord Alterations course. So I'll put a link to both of those below. All right, the final step to getting that Sean Martin contemporary gospel sound is to use slip notes and chord extensions. And this is kind of the magic. to really having that authentic contemporary gospel sound. So what am I doing now? Well, anytime I get to a chord like a D, we're not just gonna hit a D major like that, we're gonna add a little slip note up to that F sharp. Okay, so I'm striking the second note of a D major chord and I'm sliding up or doing a slip up to the third. Okay, this is called a slip note. It's used in lots of music, including country music. And so what it does is it takes a normal D major chord and you're adding the second to the chord. So now instead of D major, it's D major add two. Does that make sense? And it makes all of your major chords sound so much cooler. We do it there as well. Instead of hitting just a G major, we do a little slip note from the second of G, and so what it does is it takes a normal G chord and it turns it into a G add to chord, okay? From here, we do it again on the B minor chord. Instead of just hitting a normal B minor seven, we do a slip note from the E up to the F sharp, okay? And so what this does is it takes that normal B minor seven chord, and by adding an E to it, it turns it into a B minor 11 chord. A really, really nice chord that you can use in this style. Okay, what about from here? Okay, this A flat seven chord, it's really nice to add the B flat on the top of this chord. We call this a chord extension. It's a really nice note to add to your dominant seven chords. Okay, G major add two. We're adding the slip note there from the A. D major, we're gonna add the two here, the E over F sharp. So it's like a D major first inversion, but we're adding the E, the second note. And then from here, everything else is pretty much the same when we drop down the octave. It's gonna be the same here. Slip note to the F sharp. Slip note to the B. Slip note to the F sharp. Same chord there, E7, A7, and then D major. All right, if you enjoyed this week's quick tip, be sure to check out pianowithjohnny.com. We have over 900 step-by-step -step lessons in gospel, jazz, blues, theory, technique, improvisation. It's the full learning platform for all playing levels, and we do live events for our students. So go check out Piano with Johnny, and I'll see you in the next one.